So today we're going to be talking about biofeedback. So Mayo Clinic defines biofeedback as biofeedback is a technique you can use to learn to control some of your body's functions, such as heart rate. During biofeedback, you're connected to electrical sensors that help you receive information about your body. So what you can expect during the procedure, they say this information is fed back to you via cues, such as changes on a monitor, beeping sound, or flashing light. Now you may have actually seen biofeedback if you've seen the video game version of it. So pretty much as you learn to control something like stress, you progress through the video game. So biofeedback has been one of the more difficult treatments for me to research, partially because there's a lot of inconsistencies with how treatments are administered. And then also even the definition itself of biofeedback isn't consistent with all forms of biofeedback. So take for instance, I have done biofeedback EEG or neurofeedback. So I think that most forms of neurofeedback will match the Mayo Clinic definition of biofeedback, but the type I was administered was lens neurofeedback, which actually takes a different approach. They describe it on their website as, each client's EEG signals are unique to them and constantly changing. The lens measures these ever-changing signals of the client and matches the feedback to the client's own sociological neurological fingerprint. My experience with neurofeedback was that I had electropads that were placed on my scalp, on my fingertips, and sometimes my low back. And what would happen was that there would be a signal that was sent from my body to the computer, and then the computer would actually send that same signal back to me. Um, so that was my experience, but that's actually not the experience most people have when it comes to biofeedback. So for most people, when they do biofeedback, they're going to be learning to control their body functions. For me, I didn't have to learn to control my body functions because I was like almost like a passive reciprocant in that session. Also, sometimes even this method of sensors are going to differ. So when looking at Mayo Clinic's website on biofeedback, when we are looking at breathing, it says during respiratory biofeedback, bands are placed around your abdominum and chest to monitor your breathing patterns and respiration rate. So when it came to breathing, it they actually in the video didn't use bands placed around the abdominum and the chest. It was on the earlobe for the sensor. So really when it comes down to biofeedback, there are just going to be different ways to administer these treatments and it can be a little confusing. So Mayo Clinic does give some examples of biofeedback, and I'm actually going to show some footage of biofeedback I found through my research. So Mayo Clinic talks about some types of biofeedback. Your therapist might use a variety of biofeedback methods depending on your health problems and goals. Biofeedback types include brain waves, breathing, heart rate, muscle contraction, sweat gland activity, and temperature. I wasn't able to find a video on sweat gland activity and using biofeedback for that particular issue, but that is something that if you are interested in that, that you can ask like a biofeedback practitioner if that's something that they can possibly administer. I thought that when I was doing research that the videos on muscle contraction and temperature were some of the most interesting and informative, so I'm going to be including that in the description below. So you can purchase devices for biofeedback, and Mayo Clinic does address this. The Food and Drug Administration has approved a biofeedback device, Respirate, for reducing stress and lowering blood pressure. Respirate is a portable electronic device that promotes slow, deep breathing. However, the FDA doesn't regulate many biofeedback devices marketed for home use. Before trying biofeedback therapy at home, Discuss the types of devices with your care team to find the best fit. Be aware that some products might be falsely marketed as biofeedback devices and that not all biofeedback practitioners are legitimate. And I do feel that this is actually a really good disclaimer. So, so Mayo Clinic also goes over some of the risks for biofeedback and they mention medical conditions such as heart rhythm problems or certain skin conditions. And then they also note to talk with your doctor about it first. So for me, I did about 14 sessions of neurofeedback. My neurofeedback sessions were about 20 minutes. 
but as Mayo Clinic stated, your treatments could be 30 to 60 minutes. So I would just recommend talking with your practitioner to see how long these sessions usually are. And then as for insurance, um, my insurance did cover my neurofeedback sessions. So I would recommend talking with your insurance and seeing if um, they might cover these sorts of treatment um, are with your practitioner. So I'm not sure what the long-term benefits were for me. Um, and because of what makes it difficult too is that I've done other treatments around the same time. But there are other treatments I do feel that have impacted me more than neurofeedback. But I do think that neurofeedback did work or at least worked temporarily. And part of the reason why that is is because when I had one of my neurofeedback sessions, I noticed that I was actually pretty relaxed. And so what had happened was that I went onto the massage table because what would happen is that I would have my neurofeedback session and then after the neurofeedback session, I would have some body work done. And so I was on the massage table and I actually fell asleep. <laughs> and I, I never fall asleep. I was one of those kids that like when we take road trips, I was just so alert that I would like never fall asleep in the car. So for me, it was just I just have trouble relaxing. I have generalized anxiety disorder. Um, and so for me, that was actually a surprise that it would actually get me to that state where I can actually fall asleep on the massage table. <laughs> so um, that's just my experience with neurofeedback. So I just wanna say thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. All right, bye.